Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, some clarification came up in this episode, because I, the last episode, you know, the winter finale, I was kind of confused. Okay, which May is a real May? It should have been pretty, pretty obvious to me, because she's the one that was bleeding, so that should have clicked in my head. But I was thinking, like, I don't know, I thought it was just some kind of experiment Ida was running, but it's like, nope, it wasn't, um... That was the real maid that was in there, and the one that was talking to Phil the entire time was the fake, and it, it should have correlated in my head, but it didn't. What I really thought was interesting is the fact that she didn't realize she was a fake, because the entire episode, I was thinking, like, oh, she's just playing along, acting dumb. It's like, no, she legitimately thought she was the real maid. It's because that's the way I had kind of programmed her to be like, oh, yeah, I'm the real maid, and like, but until, like, but she could shut her down and whatnot. And I really appreciate, like, Every little twist and turn that happened in this episode, it's a really good episode of, you know, in fact, twists and turns. <laughs> I don't know why I uh, reiterated it like that. Nevertheless, um, for one, them finding out, like, Ida became the way she is. Essentially, it's kind of like, I kind of, it kind of correlates to what I was thinking before. It's like, oh, Ida wants to become human. It's kind of my original thought of, like, oh, what was going to happen with the dark hole and everything getting inside of her head. She's like, oh, I became like this because she felt pain. She got shot. But plus her knowledge of the dark hole, like, essentially the way Fitz kind of made it seem like the fact that she's feeling so much. She's feeling all, the, like, she could mimic human emotion, but now those emotions have become real. Whereas a normal human has years to kind of develop and learn how to, like, you know, understand their emotions and control them, she's being hit with it all at once. I mean, it kind of pushes the narrative that I kind of thought was going to be the case of, like, she just wants to be human is kind of what she's doing. So she's trying to get to the dark hole the entire time. And then you had the whole situation with May, well, the fake May being used in the circumstances of like, oh man, she's using her, and oh, now she found out what her dark hole was. I was thinking, I was giving Coulson a little too much crap, like, oh man, Coulson's on top of this, he knows that's the fake, oh, he doesn't. He legitimately told her the location of the real dark hole, it's like, nah, it's going to turn out to be a fake, oh, it's the real dark hole. No one figured out that that's the fake May, I mean, granted, I guess that's kind of the point, because, I mean, it's not even a matter of, dece- I mean, because it's kind of like showing you how good they are, like, it's what he, he, you know, what uh, Radcliffe was basically saying himself, that, like, Basically, he wanted to make him, you know, an AI that could pass for being human. Granted, he didn't expect things to turn uh, that way for things to be human, like for Ida to become as human as she is. But I guess that's what makes the main, the fake May, so convincing is because of fact that she doesn't even know that she's a robot, so she doesn't have to worry about something like lying. Because it, it, it's so interesting because it seems like they're developing the whole May and. Colson thing because it's like oh yo like you know Colson is like have you ever felt like you're living someone else's life he's like yeah well how do you handle he's like I got you know I've got a good poker face she's like you're terrible at poker he's like yeah but I'm still very good at hiding and he's like hiding from the fact is that I don't take as many chances as I should in life and she's like oh maybe you should he's like oh once this is all said and done maybe you know because it's like they've been kind of pushing that this season like May and Colson, which has kind of always been the thought of a thing, might have been a thing, but never anything came about it, but now at this point in time, it's kind of sad, because I'm sure when May comes back, she's going to be like, why couldn't you tell that wasn't really me, it's like, I, no one could tell it wasn't you, everyone thought it was you, it's like, how could you be fooled by a robot, I especially sure, I'm sure Mac would be offended too, I love how we, like, learning that about Mac, it's just a casual thing throwing up episode, man, it's like, Really? You, oh, you're an idiot? Why would you build such a robot? You know it's going to take over the world. Everyone's like, what? Like, he has a, a big fear of robots. He even makes a joke, to, not even a joke to Yo-Yo later on. He's like, okay, so if something happens to me, I have this l- whole part of my life insurance that's like, oh, you know, death by robot. And, it's, and Yo-Yo is like, really? He's like, yeah, If my, my bro is going to be a very rich person if this doesn't go well. Because that was kind of the thing, him and Yo-Yo bonding over the fact. It's like, how could Radcliffe build that thing? Hasn't he ever seen any 80s movie? It's like, seriously? It's like, we're going to have to make him sit down and watch The Terminator. Even Sal- even Salvation. Really? It's like, hey, he made his choice. So, it's just, it's, it's, it's so interesting because the entire episode, Mac is just chewing him. I was like, oh, you're such an idiot. This is what robots do. They rise up and they take over. And it's like no one else has that paranoid reaction except for him and Yo-Yo to a certain degree. But it's only him that's like, man, this is ro-. And he's like, yeah, you're, oh, I guess your little beautiful sex bot went crazy. And Radcliffe is like, hey, that's not fair, Mac. I've never once had sex with her. And then Coulson's like, well, that's, that's good to know. And then Fitz is looking at him like, why the hell did you even say that? You didn't even need to say that. Why did you say that? Rascal's like, what? I, I don't see what's wrong with what I said. 
But I did not see that coming with the whole situation of like, oh yeah, Ida's there explaining everything. She's like, oh, I'm trying to do this for you guys. I was like, oh, is there a secret? Is there actually a secret reason why she's doing this? Is she trying to help them without them realizing it? And all of a sudden, her head gets chopped off. I'm like, wait, what? And Mac is just kind of like, yeah, in credits. I'm like, wait, what? Did that? Did that really just happen? I was like, was that really? Because I was like, oh, I thought Ida's supposed to be the main baddie of this like second half of the season, and I was like, oh. It's like, no, I was like, no, there's got to be more to this. Is she's going to come back to life? I was like, or is Radcliffe and his grief going to rebuild her or something like that? But it's like, no, Fitz is examining it. I was like, oh, what's up with that? And then all, then all of a sudden, I was like, you should focus on Radcliffe. I mean, yeah, he's about to bring Ida back. And it's like, Ida's tender from. I was like, wait, what? That to me was the best twist. The whole thing was a ploy. This entire time, the whole Ida situation of like, oh, I'm thinking I want to become more human-like and whatnot. Ida going crazy getting feelings from the dark hole it's all been Radcliffe this entire time like like he he programmed that Ida to make her think that she was becoming human you know the whole you know make a robot an android believe a certain thing like kind of like I said with the whole May thing without her realizing she's not an android it makes her reactions realistic so it wouldn't you know doesn't seem you know because the fact I mean because that also shows you that too because it's like with May, because May acts very human-like, because even Ida acted very android, not knowing things, but it's like, when you look at May, it's like, May's a very good copy of her, to the point no one can tell the difference. Granted, we never know, because it might be later, a couple episodes from down, it's like, oh yeah, I knew she was an android the entire time, I was just playing along just to see where this is all going to go. You never know, because they do pull twists like that, because Coulson is smarter than, you know, a lot of people give him credit for. He is pretty quick to pick up on things, so that's why I'm kind of like, I was halfway expecting him to pick up on it, but he never did, so either he is completely in a dark or maybe he knows a lot more than he's letting on so I I don't know but just that got me so the whole situation about Ida becoming human like that completely tossed out what I thought was going to be the premise of this all like she wanted to become human like even bringing up possibly like oh she's doing this for the good it's like no this is all comes from Radcliffe Radcliffe became like this I mean granted see I'm sure the dark hold amplifies what's already there for a person. So he's already kind of like, you know, kind of a bad person. He got already, I mean, it seems like he was turning over a new leaf, especially with the whole Ida situation. But I think it's like, you know, just like Robbie's uncle Eli, like he was a good person, but then the dark hold got inside of his head. It's like it, it changes a person. And even though he didn't look at it long, he still looked at it and it never crossed my mind. Like, Oh, there might be ramifications for that because even Eli and them only looked at it for a little bit. But it's like, I guess like I thought he turned away from it, but he didn't this entire time. He's been plotting and manipulating. And it's like, Holy crap. He's got everyone for it. He had me for it. I was like, Oh man, that just sucks. Radcliffe had to kill his life for it. But it's like, Nope, it was all part of the plan. And it kind of shows you where his mentality is because he sacrificed one of his own Ida's just for the purpose of keeping his own cover. And it's like, Holy crap. Like, cause Ida was supposed to be kind of like his precious life for it. But the fact is he's willing to throw her away like that. Even if he has another one, the fact is he was able to throw that Ida away. Like it's nothing kind of shows you where his mind is, where it's like, Oh, all that matters is getting that dark hole. And it's like, so it looks like we're setting him up to be like at least one of the main antagonists of the season. Obviously, it's like, you know, much like Eli. I mean, I don't know if he'll take the exact route Eli took. I mean, because, like, we had the old, which I kind of skipped over it, the whole title card. I really like how the um, this half of the season's title card looks, which is kind of making me think, rather than kind of getting the powers he Eli got, I'm thinking he's aiming for more, like, the knowledge aspect of, like, being able to build an army of artificial. It seems like that's going to be, the like, a main thing, like, artificial. Like, essentially, probably going to have to deal with a similar, you know, they kind of made the comparisons already, but uh, probably a repeat Ultron situation, so. Then also in this episode, uh, Daisy kind of getting readjusted to the whole situation being back, her and Mace having a whole conversation. Mace is like, you should be thanking me. I li literally, the public had their opinion about you. They hated you, but thanks to me, because of my quick thinking, you're a, you're a hero now. And it's like, you, you, you manipulate that situation, not just for me. You did it for yourself to make you look good. And he brought up the whole Vienna situation again. Like, oh man, you're such a hero. He's like, ah oh, man, they gave me too much credit. It's like, really, you can't try and downplay that when you have uh, like a very... Um, I forgot what the word she used, like a big picture of yourself, you know, in celebration of that uh, situation. It's like you can't really downplay it. It's like like once again, like Gemma brought it up a little bit, but it's like basically there's more to that situation. I don't know. Like that's going to be something we get like it's still hard to say where Jeffrey lies. Like it seems like 
on some occasions he is a good guy that he has the best of intentions he just doesn't go about things the right way like i said the whole senator situation legitimately he had a right reason to do that because he was covering up the fact is that they broke into that prison uh, the fact is that shield agents were seen working with uh daisy quake a well-known uh criminal and then on top of that ghost rider killing someone so it just it makes sense and but it is a situation where you do see that jeffrey does care more about himself his own image it's hard it really is. it seems like he cares about shield's image but more than anything his own image you know so it's it, i've i've flip-flopped so many places with this because like oh do you trust the director do you not trust him i think no one really knows where they sit with him i'm sure definitely sure daisy doesn't but it's like definitely like someone like simmons doesn't so we're still on the fence on where she lies on this whole situation and as well as the others too so I mean, maybe it would be like an endpoint situation where we have Phil taking back over the whole um, shield situation or someone else taking someone else beside. Because, you know, it seems like he was aiming for Daisy to kind of take over the reins because it's like, yeah, I want he even said it blunt. He's like, I wanted an inhuman to take over, not Jeffrey. It's like because of the whole Lincoln thing, you know, Daisy kind of pushed everyone away and just want to get as far away from shield as she could just want to be on her own. You know, but he wanted her to be the next in line. So maybe that'll be the case in the future. Maybe she'll take over ranks. I mean, really, that kind of comes down to her. She might not want to kind of be in that situation. But then again, it's like when they search, you never know what the circumstances coming in the future. She might not have a choice. But anyway, um, we end up learning that the person inside, the person that Simmons met Ended up finding out that that was the favor, obviously, the senator had. The person that Simmons met with is VJ, the senator's brother. And essentially, it seems like we, in this episode, it kind of put a more a little more context into why the senator is the way she is. Because her and her brother, they lost their mom back when the, uh, I always forget what they're called. They even said the name in this, but I always struggle with it. The Centaurians, I forgot what they're called. The aliens that attack in during the events of the Avengers. It's because of that they lost her parents, and because of that she holds so much hate towards Inhumans. Because to her, it's like Inhumans are the infection left behind by the aliens. They left, but they left a surprise here to kind of contaminate the world and make us more like them so that they can essentially take over. Like, that's her mentality with this. So she doesn't trust Inhumans. That's why she's so against them. Even to the point that she is like, even setting up her own brother to be killed by the watchdog people, and it's like... He's like, wait, what? What's going on? She's like, we made a promise to each other, which is kind of interesting that that promise exists. But it's like if we were ever to become inhumans, we promised that we would take care of the other one. Just their hate of being inhumans. That I mean, like I say, it stems from what they've lost. So it's like your your sadness can your sadness and hate can be a little displaced. Like like you understand why they think that because essentially humans are born from them so it's just it's not like it's a stretch you know aliens and humans are born from aliens and that's where humans come from They're like alien dna mixed in there so it's like it's not much of a stretch to kind of to build uh build a bridge between those two correlations you know so but she kind of backed down because the way her brother was talking, like, hey, I'm not showing any powers. I'm not showing any symptoms. Obviously, it didn't work. But then her brother ended up, ended up revealing powers after uh, the Washoe guys tried to actually kill her. I mean, kill him. Because apparently, you know, I, it's never really come up too much. But it's like, I thought the Watch House was kind of like an independent organization, which it is. But apparently, they do have a leader known as the Superior. It never crossed my mind. I thought I, could, I think it's a situation where I never really thought of the Watch House. They are an organized like group. So obviously, they do have a leader. They probably have their own little cells scattered around and stuff like that. Their own little groups. But there is an overarching leader known as Superior. Who that may be, I don't know. But he's definitely someone that the, uh, the Watch House is working with the senator as well as the senator herself talks about but i'll kind of get that in a sec it seems like cause we still don't know quite what vj's power is um at first it seems like he kind of has like fast movement abilities i don't know whether it's like a, a heightened perception ability whether it's like super it doesn't seem like it's necessarily super speed Maybe because it doesn't seem like anything slowing down. It just seems like he's m might be speeding up, or like I said, a perception ability where it's like he sees things kind of happening a little before they can, and he kind of reacts very quickly. So it m I guess really the right word would be reflexes. Maybe he has just enhanced reflexes or something like that. I don't know. 
Simmons showed up and tries to talk to him. His sis kind of convinces him, like, no, come with me. You don't want to do this. You can't trust these people, you know, because it's like under the thought that, you know, because I, I guess that's another reason why she hates S.H.I.E.L.D. so much is because, like, she's like, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s basically the reason all this is happening, ranging from the alien attack that caused their parents' death because they got close and mixed up with stuff they shouldn't have touched or meddled with, plus everything that's happened across the series, whether it's Hydra, um, Inhumans, uh, even the whole, well, he's connected to the Inhumans, but the whole hive situation as well as even the Ghost Rider situation last season it was like all that tailored from them in some shape or form which granted the whole Ghost Rider thing is kind of a thing on its own so it's like you can't correlate that to shield but you can bring the connections like oh they know about it and are connected to it and, you know just because of the whole prison thing but it's like I'm sure just everything that's ever happened across this series, you know, always has always painted, you know, shielded in a negative light. So it's just like they get blamed for a lot of stuff, which I mean, inadvertently, shield is connected to a lot of stuff. So it's not that big of a stretch. So, but the VJ is not willing to listen to Simmons, even though she was there, the one there for him. And lo and behold, like they get in a copper. I was like, oh God, you're, you're about to get killed, aren't you? And she's like, no, don't worry about him. I was like, oh man, he's going to pull out a gun and shoot you, isn't it? And she's like, I'm sorry. It's like, wait, is she? Pam, she shoots him. I was like, oh God. And then she's basically like, don't ever doubt my devotion to this. And basically said, we well, need to take care of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now have the superior send some people. And it's like, okay, we're going to have to dump his body. And they dump his body. At that moment, I was like, okay, maybe she whispered something to him. And they, they faked the whole situation. Because also, I mean, it comes up at the end. Because I was like, really? It ends like that? I was like, I should have. I definitely had a feeling, like, especially when they point out the fact. Is, oh, yeah, we're going to have to dump his body. I was like, something's going to happen to that. And what happens is when they dump his body, he goes back into a crystal state. I mean, in a cocoon state again and it's like huh that's very interesting like that's never happened to any other hu inhuman like no inhuman has ever re-entered that state but then again it shows you that vj is something important exactly what i don't know because that's why i'm like he was in there for seven months like they don't the, the transformation doesn't take that long and it's like he was in there for a very long time with no i mean what exactly was it that actually got him to awaken was it simmons or was it just was it just finally time i'm sure simmons held but it's like because he kept trying to convince his sister it's like oh yeah you were i kept hearing your voice so i kept fighting and fighting it's like if your sister was really that much of an impact you would have gotten out it was simmons who got you out so i was kind of like what's there and like what is behind vj's whole situation like what is like it's I brought it up before, but it's like, what is his power and his balance? Because like I brought it up, uh, like for every inhuman, there is a balance to it. Just like light and darkness, there's a balance amongst the inhumans as well, where it's kind of like one thing exists to balance out this thing. Like kind of like how Hive existed in the same sense that Lash existed. They kind of were kind of counterbalances to each other to a certain extent. So a better example is like if you had an inhuman like Hellfire, and he also had an Inhuman with an Ice ability. They kind of represent balance to each other. So, just what is he going to become now? Will he like? Will he come back just the same or different? I mean, just what kind of Inhuman is he that he's becoming this? I mean, part of me is wondering: is he supposed to be kind of like a new Hive or something like that? Could he be the birth of a new hive? Like, because maybe in the grand scheme of things, there needs to be a hive to kind of lead them, or maybe he can be the new Lash in a new sense. I mean, I don't know, because even Lash didn't operate the way he's. I mean, because for one, uh, when Andrew became Lash, he ended up transforming into well, what the way Lash looked, but he didn't transform, he just looked the same, just has a certain ability, and it's like. If he was a new hive, I feel like he would have transformed too. So it's kind of like, I don't know what that whole deal is. Like I said, it's so interesting because it seems like we're setting up both our main antagonists, obviously. The watchdogs have been a problem for a while now. So it's not like that's a new thing. But um, it seems like they're kicking it up. Like It seems like they're definitely going to be main antagonists this season. Finding out whoever this leader is and what. I mean, obviously the grand scheme plan is to wipe out all the humans. And that's why I kind of thought the senator wanted to keep him around for, um, VJ around for initial. I was like, oh, she's keeping him around. I knew it had to be someone that was important to her. But I was like, oh, maybe she could manipulate him into being a weapon. But it's like, no, they don't even want to weaponize inhumans. They simply want to kill inhumans. They think she wants to weaponize inhumans, which 
which is kind of, I mean, the point is, I mean, the could, Simmons could have been like, are you kidding me? The direct, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. is an inhuman. Surprised you didn't throw that point out to him, but I guess it was kind of a situation where she was just trying to talk to him, so. I wonder will he be stuck in there another seven months or not. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just a crazy episode, many twists and turns. Um, I'm very interested to see where things go for this uh, next part of the season. Especially with the whole Radcliffe situation, like how long he's going to pretend to be a good guy. I don't know. I think I like that the most in the story when you have like a very obviously bad guy and you have him pretend to be a good guy. I think that's one of the reasons why I loved Ward so much. You know, because I... I've heard, you know, different people have told us, like, you know, especially when it came to, like, a superhero roundup, they were like, Ward is hands down probably, like, the best, like, Marvel villain that's come up so far just because of who he was, just his personality, his training, and it's just like, I really like that twist in season one when he was just like, oh yeah, you found out he was a bad guy, but no one else knew he was a bad guy, so that was kind of my, like, I feel like that's going to be a similar, similar circumstance, granted, like, Radcliffe isn't Ward. Ward is a well was well trained to be undercover. It's like Radcliffe is gonna make a mistake soon enough. It's kind of one of those situations. You kind of have to hold weight to what Yo-Yo says. She's like, uh, smart people are actually stupid. It's like yeah, because they let their in intellect. You know, in the circumstances of the show, like I feel like Radcliffe is gonna let his brain kind of like make him make brash decisions because he's going to be thinking like, oh, he's so far from everyone. He's got everyone under his thumbs that he's going to make a mistake, essentially. A very obvious mistake or slip up somewhere. So, because it also seemed like he had to, like, they kind of had to drug May a little bit more because it seemed like she might be kind of snapping out of whatever they're drugging her with. It seemed like that might have been the case. If I, I could be completely misinterpreting that, so. Once again, just a really good episode. Glad to have Agents of Show back and just can't wait to see where the rest of this season goes. Also, sign note, I get, because I brought it up before, I was wondering, will there be any more Ghost Rider? It might be, but I probably won't, m probably won't be till late season. But even then, I, with the way the direction the story's going, like, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, I, I doubt it's the last we've seen of Robbie, but still, it'll probably, he might not even pop up for the rest of the season. And even if he does, it'll probably only be for a little while. So I'm just, I'm curious to see whether, whether they'll do anything with that or not. Uh, whether that just kind of be a future season type of storyline, or will that be something that kind of comes back up later this season? So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Really, that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.